Hello and welcome to the class today. I'm quite looking forward to today's class because we'll be painting a water lily. It's a nice beginner class. I'm going to keep it quite plain. I don't want us to go too detailed today. So that if you are just starting out, this is a perfect class for you. And if you have been painting for a while, follow along. You're going to really enjoy this one. So let's start off by taking a look at what the picture looks like, and then we'll take it from there. So I am painting in oil. If you want to work along in acrylics, go ahead. The techniques are exactly the same. So that's the picture. I got this one of Pixabay. Quite pretty, eh? Uh, what I liked was the, you've got that opposite colors, the complementaries. You've got the, the purple and the yellow. So that makes that yellow really look super vibrant. So there's nothing really fa fancy or funny about this one, except maybe these little um, stamen that are over here. Besides those stamen, I don't think there's anything particularly funny. Um, so I think what we'll do is let's go over to... I think let's go to the canvas. So we've got this print out of here where I've taken away the the background so it doesn't use up all your ink, which is on a, a 400 by 300 millimeter canvas. So that's roughly 16 by 12 inches. So you can print out this uh, full size reference photo and then there's a sketch template as well plus another PDF with, with them just on a smaller size for you to print out. Um, so for the background, I think what we'll do is we'll maybe start, we'll do some leaves, we'll do some background, and we'll do some leaves, do some background. So by the time we get to here, all that's finished, and then we can work on, on all of that over there. Alrighty, so the first thing I think we need to do is let's bring this color guy back and do a bit of planning. So we always start with the back and we work our way forward, right? But if we look at this background, you've got super sharp edges all the way around, which tells you that you can do this background literally right at the end if you wanted to. So I, I thought of doing that, but yeah, that would be boring. <laughs> so we'll do it. Bit of this and a bit of that. Bit of this, bit of that as we go along. So that by the time we get here, we've got that background done. So we're going to start with the, the petals. And then we'll do this. And then, and then right at the end, we'll have to tackle those stamens. And that way, we've worked from the back to the front. All right, let's go to the palette. And let's sort out a few colors. For that, let's see, maybe I can put, maybe I can put the picture on, on that side. So for a start, we need to get that purple color there. So for that, I think I'm going to take some French ultramarine. I have to put a, a, a recent, a reasonable dollop down there. Because there's quite a bit of canvas to cover. So let me know if you're painting with. Welcome, Deline, Harbant, Omen. And then the, uh, the next color, you can either use like a crimson or a cadmium red. I think the best way of doing it is just... Uh, um, sort of give yourself a uh, a test here and there to see which is going to give you the best color. I just want to see if this guy is focusing properly. That seems better, right? Eh? Okay. 
All right, so let's take a bit of, I've got a bit of cadmium red here. And let's first do an experiment. You know, often you, you think you know, and then you mix the color, and then it doesn't look quite as good as what you were hoping. So let's just say do that. Some ultramarine, a bit of cadmium red in it, and see what it does. And my cadmium red, I find the different brands of cadmium red also different. They're not always all the same. Yeah, that seems to be doing the trick. What the heck, for interest sake, let's quickly do the, the crimson and see. Let's see what it does. So let's just put a just a tiny amount of paint down. Put that one over there. A little bit of crimp, about the same amount of each. Mix that one in. Yeah, it's also a very nice color. You know, it's a fact I think that's maybe a little bit a little bit more vibrant than than the cadmium red. Yeah, so what the heck? We'll use the we'll use the crimson. So I'll just take the cadmium red. I'll pop him over there. And we'll just put him back in the tube. Alright, so let's mix up a, a fair amount of that. I'm going to take all this blue. Let's first just start with that amount of crimson in it and we'll see where we get. Hi Marcel, welcome. So what we're looking for is a, a purple. So it's got a possibly possibly on the violet side. In other words, more on the blue side. If I if I look at the at the reference photos, it's sort of just a little bit towards the blue side. So when I'm mixing like this, it's a really dark color, right? Eh? So you can't really see. So what I do is I I spread out the paint really thin, and then I look at that gap between the palette and the thicker area of paint. That little in between bit over there is what the what color the paint actually is. Yeah, that's great. I'm happy with that. So let's go ahead and mix up some a, a full amount. So I think we'll just double up on that. Now that we know how much of each to use, it should be reasonably straightforward. There we go, nice and quick. All right, so we've got nice dark little bits of that. Um, just way down in this little bottom corner over here, there's this one petal that's really, really in, in, in sh shadow like that. The rest are a lot lighter. So let's get some white. I'm just going to put... Yeah, this picture is going to have to go in that corner, unfortunately. He's going to have to go there. Let's get some white down there. So it's just titanium white. So let's take some of this and just work a bit of white in it. Let's get that dark that we're seeing on the tips of the of the petals and 
And now you've also, now that you've added that white in, you're also starting to see the true color of the paint. So now you may want to adjust it. If you see maybe it's too blue or it's too red or too whatever. I think I'm happy with this at that stage. So let's get a bit more paint over there. Gee, got some birds outside that want to kill each other. <laughs> Don't know if you can hear that. It's a big family feud going on outside. <laughs> All right, so now I'm mixing a mid-tone because we, we've we got the, the lights, we've got intermediate kind of colors, and now we need some, and we need some light colors. I always say you need three colors for 3D. So let's, let's see. Maybe a little bit more. What you're doing is you're looking for a good contrast between that and that. Okay, now we mix up another another batch. This time with lots of lots of white in it. Not still not light enough, so I'll separate that. And then do that. So I'm looking for the lightest colour on these petals. So just hold my, I uh, pick up some paint on the on the knife like this, and then I hold it up against the screen in the area. So it's roughly like, I'm just trying to find a spot. It's roughly over there. And that's what I'm doing. So I can also now see that the um, the lighter color seems to be a little bit redder than. The darker color which seems to be a little bit bluer so i'm going to pick up just a little bit more of the of the crimson and work it into this lighter color here yeah so let's let's go with that so there's a good contrast between there and there and between there and there so if you've got that good contrast that means you're going to have a nice um You'll be able to get a nice 3D effect on the canvas. Now let's work in some some painting medium into this. So what I've got here is the the liquid fine detail. So I'm going to thin it down now to the consistency of mayonnaise. And that way I know it's going to flow onto the canvas nice and easily without me having to plaster it on. That's what I'm looking for. So we'll add medium to all three of them roughly the same amount so that they're all three roughly the same Consistency. Hey, Brendis. Glad you can make it. I haven't seen you in the life class for a while. You've been a busy lady. Nice, creamy consistency. Yeah, that's lovely. So you'll notice in between each, I'm just wiping it off on my on my roll of kitchen towel the paper towel because I don't want to contaminate the paint even before I started painting with it yeah it's a really nice a nice consistency great now we need one more and that is the essentially the black for the background. 
So my idea with this painting today is we're only going to use pretty much the three primary colors. Red, yellow and blue. So we're going to take the ultramarine. We'll put that down. And then we'll take less of the the crimson or the cadmium red, whichever one you're using, whatever red you're using, less of that to mix up the purple. And then you're going to take some cadmium yellow and you're going to add that to it. So what I've got here is the cadmium lemon hue. Any cadmium yellow will do. And we get even less of that into this mixture. So lots of blue, less red, and even less yellow. I generally say a, a ratio of four parts, two parts, and one part. But each paint is different, so it's just a that's a very rough ballpark. Okay. So again, what I'm doing is I'm checking myself on that little no man's land over there to see what the color actually is. All right, so Lily is asking, what is this liquid for? So the liquid, um, it's, uh, in the brand I'm using now is called Liquid Fine Detail. What it is, it's a painting medium. You get different brands. This is just the one that, that I'm using of painting medium. So what that does is it's got oil in it. But it's used to also got some varnishes and stuff in it as well. So that thins down the paint. So that makes it more, more spreadable. But when you're working in oil, you have to follow the fat over lean rule. And that is the paint that you put at the bottom must have the least amount of oil in it. So it must be a lean paint. So you add just enough liquid, li um, nearly said liquid, just enough painting medium to get it to flow nicely onto the canvas. And then subsequent colors, you add more medium in it so it's thinner. So that it helps you, A, when you're painting, because now, because it's thinner, it goes on over the previous colors easier. It just sort of glides over that previous paint because it's now got a, a, a thinner consistency. But then also it helps with the drying process so that your painting doesn't crack. Because the, the, the top layer now has more oil in it, so it's more flexible. Because as your paint dries, it, it expands and contracts. So I'm going to add quite a bit of medium into this background because there's nothing going over it and I can get it to just, it's a really dark color. So then I can get it to just glide <laughs> over the background and it'll be able to block in nice and quick and easy. So as far as the color is concerned, check it. You, you hold it like that and you see, is it still purple? If it is, then you add more yellow to it. So speaking of blacks, I've just uploaded a review of Black 3.0. Somebody in the class the other day was asking me about the Black 3.0. Um, it's supposed to be the, the blackest black. It is now an acrylic and we're working with oil, so just bear that in mind. So I did do just a little bit of a, a test of the black 3.0 versus the different other blacks that I've got, some Mars black and uh, Payne's grey and so on. All right, so what I'm going to do now is to save myself a bit of brush washing. I'm going to take three of the same brushes, just regular bristle brushes. Uh, they must be about one centimeter, just less than half an inch in size. And I'm going to paint with them. I'm going to use one for this. 
one for this and one for that guy and that way if i need to paint in dark areas i can use the one brush if you need to paint in light mid mid-tone areas i use the one brush and light colors i use the other brush and then i'll use a completely different brush for the for the background and that saves you not having to wash your brush the whole time so generally what i'll do is i'm going to put those brushes down at the correct places can you see that so there's one two three so as i need it i pick it up and when i'm finished with it i put him down in the correct place and that way i'm not getting confused with which brush is which and the reason why i do that let's head over to the canvas and then we can uh, start painting so just give me a, a second to set up the all the cameras at the right places on the screen yeah i think i'll keep the palette just small there in the corner that should be good enough all right so angelina's asking what is the water for um angelina no it's not water we're working with oil today so it's a painting medium so the painting medium can you see it's got a bit more of, a, of a, an orangey look to it trying to get it so that the, oh my goodness <laughs> oops i forgot i've got the lid not the lid wasn't on so what happens is oh well now you can see it nicely anyway it's, it's got oil in it but it's also got like a varnish in it so that gives your your painting a bit of a semi-gloss and a lot of the mediums you can use actually as a as a final varnish in the end of the day so you see it accidents happen to all of us <laughs> it's not a problem we'll just keep it back all right so what we're going to do now is we're going to start filling in these uh the petals and then once we've got a series of petals finished then we'll add the the background around it because they end in a nice sharp line that's not a problem so the most important thing to look out for is the different tonal values on each petal so as you paint you're going to paint one petal at a time one by one by one that's all all righty let's put that aside as a royal mess now <laughs> so much for my for my reference picture as well hey eh? he's toast i couldn't really show you much of them anymore if you're working in acrylics then then they would use water to to thin your paint but with well painting you need to use a painting medium all right so let's just start say with with this guy over here can you see he's darker on this side darker on this side and then he's lighter here in that central bit so i'm going to start with the darkest paint And I, I like to also always start on the edge. And the way I do it is I, I pick up some paint. Then when I come here, I'll start and I'll just gradually work my way closer to that edge over there. In 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 this in, in this motion. So that can you see the tips of your brush? Um only reach so far. So if I do that. It's always going to make me a line on the end. All right, so I'm going to put this color down roughly in the place I see it. It comes to around here. And then it gets, starts to get lighter. 
And now as I start putting this color down, what I'm also just checking for is the consistency. Is it flowing off the brush nicely or not? If it is, then great. If it's like really just running off the off the brush, then I know, okay, you know what? I've gone a bit too far. I, I, I need to add more paint into this mix. I've made it too thin. Okay, so now I'm going to take the mid-tone. And if it's too thick, you're having to plaster it on, then you just have to add a little bit more medium. Okay, so can you see over here, here's the mid-tone kind of color. So I'm adding that mid-tone down there, next to each other. I'm not letting these two colors mix or anything at this stage. Not yet. Shortly. And now, the rest of that is basically the light color. In actual fact, down there, it maybe goes even a little bit lighter than what we've got. So we'll take this, and we'll put him down in the places that we've got. We see it. Where it meets the next petal, I'm using that tip of the brush to make sure I get a nice sharp edge, like that. So here's something that people often do, and that is they thin their paint down with turps, turpentine. Please never do that. Turpentine was designed to clean the paint of your brushes. So what happens is now you're using the turpentine to thin down your paint and you're destroying the bond between the paint molecules because that, that's its job. It, it destroys the bond so that you can uh, quickly clean your brushes. So now you've painted your, your painting with paint which has a, a weakened bond. So eventually it's going to crack and flake and even peel off the canvas. So don't do that. I've had too many students come to me with paintings that are peeling. All right, let's get some more white over there, because we now need a bit of a, a bit of a lighter version there at the bottom. Eh? Right, so you'll see over here. All I've done is just because we've got all these little um, stamen, I haven't drawn those stamen in. I've just roughly here where that yellow ends. I've added myself just a little squiggly line, and that's good enough. All right, so now we're going to just take some white. Let's maybe mix a little bit, uh, an extra color, just with a bit of extra white in there. That's good enough. Pop a tiny amount of medium into that to get his consistency right. Awesome. Always use a, a painting medium to thin down your paints. Okay, so I've got that over there. And I'm going to just work in this lighter color down the bottom over here. Great. So now you've got all your colors in the right places. Now we need to blend those guys into each other. And with these flowers, that's what makes them so, so much fun to paint because they're very forgiving. You don't need to do perfect shadings. In, in actual fact, you want your shadings to be a little bit iffy, a little bit stripey and stuff still. Because that gives you that, the, the, the texture in the petal. So all I'm going to do is once I've blocked in that color, I'm going to just really roughly, in the direction of the petal, work those colors now into each other really rough there the mid-tone into the dark i'm going to use the the mid-tone brush so the safest brush to do your your blending with is the the mid-tone brush because he, he's a little dark and he's a little light so you're not going to dramatically change the color of the paint that's on the brush all right, so there we go. See, I've I've left it specifically a little bit stripey still. And that's given us a, a lovely petal effect. All right, so can you see this petal is now in front of that one? So we've got that guy way at the back there. So we need to tackle him next. 
and he's light, super light. In fact, in actual fact, he's the lightest petal of the lot. So I'm going to clean off my lightest brush. And I'm going to pick up some of this lightest paint and I'll block this guy in. Using the tip of the brush to get that nice sharp edge over there. There's a tiny amount of green sticking out just in that little corner over there. Can you see that? Maybe it's difficult to see on the reference photo. I'll show you in a minute. That tiniest amount. There we go. And now we also want to get a little bit of a, a petal effect on that. So I'm just going to wipe off the excess on the brush again. Because now we're changing colors on this on this brush. We're going between the, the, the light and the super light. <laughs> and I'm just going to add with the, uh, our initial light mix. Just a few little stripy lines like that. Very gentle. And nothing, nothing dramatic. Just a few little lines like that. That's enough to create that. The texture that we want. <laughs> so as we go, I'm still busy mopping up little bits of medium. <laughs> All right, so the next one closer is this guy over here. So let's see, he's got quite a bit of the dark. So I'm going over to the dark brush. And let's get that in over there. So I'll show you that little dark corner there in a minute, that green corner. Can you see I'm not adding a ton of paint? I'm having to scrub a little bit to get into the weave of the canvas. It's really important that you get into the weave of the canvas. You don't want those little white, almost, I, I call them pixels. <laughs> it looks like pixels sticking out. So Lily's asking, how long does it take for people that are learning? To go realist that barely started um the more you practice the easier it becomes I, I call them brush miles the more brush miles you put in the sooner you can get you get there it's as simple as that learning to paint and draw is quite frankly it's a skill it's a skill that you're learning like any other trade like um, learning to tile your bathroom or anything like that. It's a skill that you have to learn. Okay, so I've gone over to the medium color now. I'm blocking these guys in. So the more you work at it, the better you get at it. And that's why classes like these help you so much because you, you, you have now somebody teaching you. You don't have to figure it out by trial and error. So it's always good to have, like with anything, I mean, if, if you're learning a, if you're learning to become a plumber, for example, you, you, you go to, you go to a school and you learn and they, they teach you how to be, how to do all the plumbing things. And this is no different. It's, it's a trade, if you think about it. All right. So now I've got my mid-tone brush. So I'm going to just blend these guys into each other. Making sure there's no, no pixels left. <laughs> the, the canvas is nicely covered. And it, leaving it a little bit stripy. Okay, here at the bottom, it goes a little bit lighter. So I'm going to take just a tad of our light value. Pop it in there. And also just blend him in. So how light or how dark these petals are is going to depend on whether they're pointing towards the sun or not. All right, so it's all the way back to the dark. And can you see I'm getting myself a nice sharp edge between this petal and the one next to it. So 
to give you to try and give you a concrete answer let's say f a month or a year or whatever it's impossible because it depends on how much you paint and then obviously with certain techniques you pick them up sooner than others okay so that was the mid-tone and i'm going over to the light the rest of it does seem to be light but that little edge is darker so i'm going to put all this over here and then from here downwards we can't really make out any distinct petals because they, they're hidden by those stamen. So I'll just leave that little edge over there and I'll fill him in with the, the, with the mid-tone color. So if you want to get really good at something quickly, then stick to one thing. Let's say, for example, you decide I want to I wanna learn to paint flowers. I really like to paint flowers. Then don't paint flowers one day and, and dogs the next day and landscapes the next day. Just paint dogs. Master that technique. Okay, so can you see how that little that edge there has created a, a separation between this petal and that petal because you've got a contrast between this one and that one there's a difference in color and that sharp edge and that makes you makes them separate all right so let's take a look over here i think let's just fill that in with a with a matoni kind of color just to have some something there when if there's something shining through between the the stamen then at least there's a color there Okay, so as we come down here, there I can see is another petal again, so we, we can leave that. Yeah, we'll just make that as though, it will look as though it's another another petal over there, right? Eh? It does seem to be going dark through to light, dark through to light, dark through to light. So we'll stick with that, we'll, we'll keep that edge dark. Alrighty, so now that we've done the back ones, now we can do the front one. He's quite dark, eh? So again, I'm looking for a nice sharp edge to separate these petals from each other. A sharp edge always tells you there's a corner or there's distance. Okay, I'll now just work this a little bit further in. It seems to be quite a lot, quite dark over here. And then it goes light in the center because that, that petal is doing this. So you've got the light hitting here and it's going darker there and it's appearing darker over there. Hey Gracie, welcome to the, to the classes. Do you normally paint in oil or acrylics? Let me know. All right. So you'll you'll see that I'm now using trying to use my left hand. Let me rather put it that way. I'm not saying using. I'm trying to use my left hand to do this edge over here, and that's just simply because during the class I can't go and turn my canvas. You'd eventually get seasick with me con constantly turning the canvas. So I'm plodding along here with my left hand. You don't do that. You turn your canvas around. So I'm going to work this dark all the way down here. It seems to be dark from top to bottom. Alrighty, and let's see, he comes a bit further down to roughly down to there, and then he turns to a mid, mid color. So I'll grab the mid tone brush, let's pop all that down over here. A good old scrub to make sure I'm getting 
into the weave of the canvas. So now that you've been painting for a while, you'll find that your brush is gradually picking up more and more paint. Now I want to mix those two colors into each other. So if you start doing that now, then this paint could overtake that paint over there. So I'm going to just wipe off that excess when I feel it's getting a little bit full. When we're painting flowers, you never use lots of paint. So now you've basically got a, a dry brush. And now I'm just moving that paint that's on the canvas already. I'm just moving that around. Instead of adding more paint. Keep it nice and stripy. But now sometimes you will find that the one one color will overtake the other. Then you just use whatever color is being overtaken. Let's say, for example, the, the black is or the dark is being overtaken. So now you pick up your dark brush and you, you'd work that in. And then it's going to physically add more paint of the, the darker one. And that will then force the other guy back. I'm going to add just a little bit lighter here in the center, just just to really bring up that that little curling effect. I think that's fine like that. So Chase is saying, I taught myself to be more realistic by practicing with digital painting, and as you can, because you can undo as much as you want, and then it doesn't cost you the earth worth of paint, and then once you know how to do it, then you just apply it to the canvas. That's a great idea, Chase. Okay. I think let's tackle that little, see there's a little piece of a, um, just a little tiny speck of of petal sticking out at the back there. I haven't even drawn it in. I'm just going to eyeball it in. So let's get that edge over there, which is light. So I'm bringing it all the way up to that petal. I'm bringing it all the way up to that petal over there. Now is it really, it's, it's a tight fit over there. So I'm going to use a a smaller brush so this is just a, a soft bright you can use a soft full but you could use a a fine liner or a, or a fine round anything like this that's going to get you in there let's say use the the mid-tone let's pop that in there and then we'll just blend them downwards as a quick little shading Yeah, just like that. That's great. Okay, next one. He is all the way back to the dark. So let's start with the dark. The dark seems to be all the way around the outside edges. So let's get those those edges established. So when I'm painting, I'm also always just trying to figure out what direction is the sun coming from and that kind of thing. Because that helps you figure out where your highlights and your shadows need to be. So in an ideal world, when you're painting, you try and get or you try and choose a, a picture with a the light is coming, let's say, distinctly from the left or distinctly from the right. Because that gives you full highlights and shadows. Nice, distinct highlights and shadows on on either side. So that goes to there and it does seem to be coming in front of this guy. So I'm going to go over what I've painted on that previous petal. I'm just going to ignore what I've painted before. It's irrelevant now. 
Alright, so let's see, where does that dark? A dark seems to come all the way down to roughly this area over here, and then he's going lighter. So with this picture here, I think the light seems to be coming directly from overhead. It's not coming from the side as normal. And that's why we have the tips of the petals, which are pointing sort of upwards, are, are darker than these bottom bits. Because you've got that petal is curling like this. So if the sun's coming from the top, it's hitting that directly, and it's, it's not really hitting that directly. And that's why the tips are darker than the... Then the central central bits. So you always have to look out for that when you're painting flowers. Because if the light's coming from the side, you'll find that, let's say for example, the, the left hand petals will be much darker than the right hand petals. If the light is coming from the left to the right. Okay, so let's work that in, going down to there. And while we're at it, we might as well just quickly give him his little texture over there, working those guys into each other. Just a quick little, quick few flicks. The best way to check yourself is to stand back and see, do I have a line still there where those two colors met? I'll show you in a minute. So let's do it with this guy over here. So that mid-tone stops over there, right? Now I'm putting the lighter color down here. So let's do that. Now there where they meet, they sort of form a line. So I'm going to take, let's take that mid-tone brush, and are we going to blend these guys into each other? So I'm going to blend them in up to a point where I can't see that there was a line there anymore. If you can still see a line, see like that, there's still a line that tells you you haven't blended enough. So again, I'm just getting rid of that excess because I can see that that dark is coming down now too far. That tells me there's too much dark on this brush. So I'll start the inside the light and I'm going to gradually work my way up. And gradually go from up to down and then up and down again without stopping. Until eventually that line of yours is now missing. You see that? So Patricia's asking, do you think you get better results in flowers using oils than acrylics? Hmm. I would tend to say yes, and I'm going to tell you why. Because well, you're going to get better results quicker. Because what happens is you've got the oil stays wet for a lot longer, so your blending time is a lot longer but now having said that with acrylics you 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 layer the colors so you're going to layer maybe some colors down and your, your paint's going to dry on you so then you just once it's fully dry you just blast it with the hair dry once it's fully dry then you just come along and you uh, add a new layer and you add it in thin like glazes and that eventually gives you a, a smooth a shading is what any oil painting could could be all right so i'm working those two guys into each other now let's get the lightest color
get those two colors next to each other but it does seem to be light all the way down into that little corner over there okay so now it's back to the the mid-tone brush wipe him on the paper towel so to get rid of all the excess paint and let's blend these two guys into each other so it's quite a quick shading and that's a different shading to the previous guys have you noticed that this one is shading light to dark along the length where this one is shading dark to light along its or along this one is along its width width and that one is as long as <laughs> getting tongue tied this one is along its width and that one is shading along its length and that's simply because the sun is catching this petal different to that petal they're at different angles all right i think now's our cue to to go ahead and just do some some background and start getting some of that background in there so for just for three seconds let's go over to the to the photo i want to show you that little bit of green that's can you see there in the top corner there that's green and it's getting darker and darker so that's probably just a function of where this flower was in the in the garden but i think we'll just we'll just do everything everything with the dark today let's see where were we over there like that so for those small little bits you're never going to get in there with a bristle brush they are just too rough so i'm going to use you can use a soft full bit i'm going to use this little little bright brush today very carefully come in now you need to make sure that you come right up against that petal if you need to even slightly over the petal you don't want a little white halo in between the petal and the background because what that would do is it would trash your dis the distance Because now you're creating a separation between the background and the foreground. You're adding an item between them. All right, so what I like to do is I like to come in with a, a nice soft brush. And here it's important, that's why I added quite a bit of medium into the paint. Because that would now let the paint flow nicely off the brush. And that allows you to get these edges in nice and easy. So Susan is asking, what about using a retarder for... Um, for when you're working with a uh, with acrylics, yeah, you can use a retarder as well. I usually don't mind the acrylics drying on me. I what I do is you, you'll see I'm always spraying my palette with water when I'm painting an acrylic, so I can paint with that same palette. Of paint the whole day just by keeping it damp and if the paint dries on the canvas yeah so what then I just let it dry and I just continue with the next layer over to next to it I always try to keep the the palette itself or, or sorry the canvas itself wet by spraying that with a fine mist of water and it just never really didn't really work for a start the spray bottles always tend to splatter all over the show all right so can you see what i've done i've got a nice little edge around there now i can take a, a, a nice rough big um bristle brush and scrub that last bit in so that goes nice and quick but here around the edges the, the 
of the petals you have to work really careful and now that I've got this lovely dark contrast in look how nice the petals are starting to stand out because you've got a, a good contrast there for them okay so what I'm doing is I don't want this to form a halo the brush strokes to form a halo around the flower so I'm coming in and I'm just using horizontal strokes and I'm very gently just brushing that paint all in one direction and that way you don't get a halo around your your petals Otherwise, that also tends to destroy your... Uh, okay, I'll have to leave just a little bit of a gap there because we haven't painted that petal and we don't want to get this dark color into the petal. This is background color. So I'm doing this as quick as I can. You take your time, get this edges nice and crisp. Crisp and neat. The sharper that edge, the better the distance between foreground and the background is. You can see now how quick this background goes once you've got that that edging done. That's why I always do the edging first. And as with the flowers, I'm not adding a thick layer of paint here. I'm, I'm adding a, a very thin layer of paint. If you find you've got a little bit too much paint, then just take your, um, your brush and just wipe it on the paper towel. And then you continue smoothing the paint out. So then what happens is the paint will now, some of that excess paint will now stick to the brush. So your brush, instead of putting paint down, will actually be paint picking paint up. Right, so now that I've got that nice horizontal stroke over there, now the background is going behind the foreground. You see that? Okay, let's tackle this, this guy over here. So it's all the way back to the, the dark one again. Yeah, it does seem to be dark all the way down this edge over here. There. And it does seem to be dark mostly down this edge over here very thin little edge over there so we'll add a very thin little edge and then here this this petal seems to be hollowing out is 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 bowing like that in this area of yes so it bows like that and folds upwards and then it folds back this way again So we've got to use all these colors that we've got to show those folds. So it's dark in this area over here. <laughs> Brenda's asking if I'm ambidextrous. No, not particularly. <laughs> 
I do just use when I'm painting here in the classes, I do have to sometimes use my left hand. It's pretty awkward, but just to save me from having to turn over the can to turn the canvas upside down. So I just do little really basic movements like that. Alrighty, so that there is it's not quite the lightest colour and it's not quite the mid-tone either, it's sort of something in between. So you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up just an in-between colour. Let's use this mid-tone. So right here on the palette. Let's go to let's go to there for a second. You see these colours are now lying very individual on the on the palette. Sometimes you need just a colour that's in between those two. So you grab some of this and you grab some of that, and there you mix yourself an in between colour over there. And now you can use that guy too. And that's why I always lay my paint down from dark going through to light. So then I can do those little in-between mixes at any stage. Cool. That all seems to be running in this vicinity here. So we'll block that in over there. And then we'll blend them in. So there's no pressure here. Very light touch on the canvas. So what you can also do is you don't have to just use acrylic or only use uh, oil in a painting. What you can do is do your basics with a, with an acrylic. Then you can get that dry nice and quick. And then the fine little, the, the final sh smooth shadings and stuff you do with oil. And that way you get the best of both worlds. So there's just a little spot that I've noticed that isn't, uh, I haven't covered the canvas completely. So there's a, a few pixels visible. <laughs> All righty, now that we've got that, we can fill in this little bit over here. Cool, make sure the lines are horizontal. Awesome. Yeah, so we're nearly done with the petals. They're not that difficult, eh? They're actually quite fun to paint. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. We're quite dark here on this top edge. And then he goes to a mid-tone over there. So we'll, I think we'll stop at this point over here. He's darkest at that point over there. Just this bit over here is the dark. Okay, so we've got mid-tones over here. And those mid-tones seem to be going all the way down over here. And that's great. That's, there's our, our, our tonal value, our tonal value contrast between the one petal and the next.
Okay, the dark seems to come around there and the rest is rest is light. So let's go over to the light color. Can you see how much quicker it goes with a brush? If you just imagine you're to not between each color try and use a different use the same brush but just clean it. What usually happens then is that you, you start to get lazy, so you just pick up more paint, pick up more paint, and eventually your, your paint brush gets so full of paint. And it's a mixture of all the, other, all the other paints that you're using, all the different tonal values, that it ends up just being like a mid-tone. And everything you paint is a mid-tone. And there's all your beautiful contrasts gone. Okay, so um, Ishri is asking if we can use the painting medium inside acrylic. No, you can't. And you, and you don't need to. With acrylic, you just add water. Instead of adding medium in acrylic, you just add water. So with the oil paint, you add the medium into your paint to, to thin it. And that's simply because we're adding that, because we have to adhere to that fat over lean rule as well. All right. Now, let's get these guys blended into each other. With acrylics, you don't have that, that thing. You can add, as soon as your paint's dry, you can add th a thin paint or a thick paint over it. It doesn't matter. But with, with oils, you always have to paint a thinner or a, a, a fatter paint over your previous layer even if the previous layer is dry. It has to have more oil in it. Because oil dries incredibly slowly. You may feel that it's dry. But it's in fact, it's still busy drying. It can take months to fully dry. So the painting medium does have a drying agent in it as well. That's also another thing I forgot to mention. It does have a drying agent in it which does speed up that drying process. Alrighty. End is in sight. On these petals, and we can get to that little center, but that's going to be interesting to paint, eh? Uh, Cam is asking, can we add a hint of crimson to some of the petals to to increase the brightness? Yeah, absolutely. Remember, that, that, that's what we did do when we mixed the colors. So if you do now find at this point that you probably didn't add enough, that's fine. You can add more. Oh, and I'll show you how to do it. It's really quick and easy. And we'll do it right at the end. Let's Let's complete the the basic petals. What I usually do is once I've started painting like this, I don't panic too much. If I if I see ah, oh, you know what, my colours aren't quite hundred percent. I leave the painting to dry. I've got the medium in it, so it's going to dry within a a week or so. And then I'll just use glazes or dry brushing, and I'll adjust that colour. And it it's really super quick then, super quick. And in fact, it's actually easier than trying to do it now. That's when you've got large areas, of course. If you're just little small spots, maybe you're painting a, a tree and the apple that you painted, you can see he's not quite red enough, then you, you're going to just adjust that apple right there. And then That's when you've got large, big areas like this. Then it's easier to just leave it to dry and then just use glazes. Using glazes, you can almost infinitely, and dry brushing it, you can almost infinitely adjust your colors. Until you are 100% happy. Okay, this seems to come a little bit darker. And you see there's a little bit of a light patch over there. Because this petal is round like that, 
you've got a little bit of a kink, but you've also got a little bit of a kink in the center. So this bit is pointing more towards the light, but we can't see it. All we're seeing is this this edge over here of that petal. We're not really seeing this top edge. It's out of view. But that top edge is now getting that full sun. So that's why you got that, just that little bit of a light over there that you're seeing. Okay, then this guy comes down around here. Somewhere like that, we can't particularly see where he comes because he's covered in those stamens. So we'll just do our own thing because we need to have a background there for those stamens, for anything that shines through in between them. That seems fine there like that. This bit over here, because he's now starting to point towards the light, but he's also been... A the shadow has been cast on it by the by the stamens. He's not quite the highlight color yet. So that goes up to around there and then there as well. Just a bit of an in-between color there. And then here we've got this lovely highlight. In that vicinity there. Okay, so I've just put those colors down. We'll use the mid-tone brush to blend these guys into each other. Great. Okay, now we've got this one little guy over here. He's really, really dark. So I'm just going to use the darkest color. Pop him in. Yeah, like that. Right, so now we're at a point where I think we need to stop with these petals because these guys here are in front of those guys over there. So we'll definitely have to stop there first. Um, Steph, Stefina, the classes are every every week the same time. So if you go to my website, the link is, let me bring that up on the screen for you. The link is there. You'll see there, there's a, a countdown timer always counting down to the next live class. And that way you, you won't miss it. The easiest way of making sure you never miss the live class is to join my mailing list on the website. There's a form that you can fill in. And then every week, I always, in the beginning of the week, I tell you what's coming up and what, what I've added to the website. And then I also tell you what's the, th what's the live class for the week. All right. So let me show you how to, how to adjust the colors. So now you take, I can see this one over here, for example, now maybe needs a bit more, needs a bit more red. So let's, let's bring up. I'm just going to bring up. A larger version of the palette. I don't think we'll, we'll go all the way to the palette. It's not necessary. We'll just do that for now. 
So now you're just going to take this color over here is the one that you that you need to adjust, right? So now you'll pick up some of your red and you'll adjust him. Until you're happy. And you can now because you've got lots of stuff on the on the canvas, you can actually hold your knife up on the to the canvas and not to the screen anymore. So I'll do that. I'm not going to make it too dramatically different now, otherwise I'm going to have to spend a, a while painting all these other guys. But I'll just do enough to show you. Let's say, for example, you decide that that's what I want. Just see if I can bring up a... A photo over there so maybe you look at that and you say okay that's that's the color that I want now you're going to use this paint and I think just for now well, I suppose it doesn't really matter I'll just use a different brush so I'm going to take this paint and let's just thin him down. Just to the same consistency as the, as the other guys, because he can't be now thicker. He's got to be at least the same consistency or even thinner. Okay, let's get that in. And I'm just going to take a tiny amount of paint. I'm picking up the paint. Let's go back to, sorry for jumping around with a different different cameras I'm going to pick up this paint and then I'm going to wipe the excess off you can also use your your roll of kitchen towel just on a on a clean space and just wipe off that excess you don't want too much because you 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 essentially like doing a bit of a glaze at the moment all right where were we there So what I'll do is you've always got a pile of paint. So eventually you've got a pile of paint and next to it you've just got this little thin area. So you're picking up paint from that that thin area over there. So Ishri is asking, uh, do we prepare the canvas for before doing any oil painting? No, not at all. When you buy your canvas. All right, let me just explain what I'm doing here and then we'll chat about the canvases, Ishri. So I'm adding just a super thin layer. There's the lightest touch on this brush and I'm just working that in there remember the the flower has got a bit of a stripy effect so I'm just adding that lightest brush over there if you have a large area that you really do need to completely change then you can scrub because maybe all this paint is now wet then you can just scrub over it so if you know you you Generally nowadays you're buying your canvases pre-primed so that the factory has done all the work for you. So you just buy it as long as you buy a good quality canvas from a reputable uh, manufacturer, you're good to go. Just start painting. Really absolutely no need to do any prep work after that. Right, so I'm just going to bring some of this in into the into these light areas because that's that's where it needs it. And now you can see how quick it goes. And that's why I don't panic too much about my colors being slightly off. Because it literally takes minutes. And you've and you fixed your color up. Look there. We're done. Sorted.
Okay, let's tackle that background, get that out the way. It's funny how these petals have got a little kink in them. Halfway down the side. Quite unusual. You can always see um, on the when you're buying a canvas on the little label that or the piece of paper that comes with it, it tells you whether it's been primed or not. But you, you can instantly tell it'll be a raw canvas if it hasn't been primed, and if it is primed, it's, it'll be white. So what they will do is they'll tell you if it's double or triple primed. So if if they generally if it doesn't say anything, you can assume it's been double primed. And if it's been triple primed, they will say so. So do you also hold your breath when you're doing fine work like this? There we go, nearly done. Yeah. So obviously if you uh didn't want this just black, you could use another picture that's got a nice dark background. And then add that in. Or you can add a bit of a bokeh effect here in the background as well. That would also work. I quite like the plain backgrounds because it, it doesn't attract your attention away from the flower itself. But that's just me. Like I say, the, if you're going to take a look um, with the, the flower and the butterfly painting that we did, on the website, Balma's paint posted her, her version of the painting and she's added a background to it and she's added the bokeh effect. And you'll see how awesome it looks. Looks really beautiful. Alright, let's spread them out, get them horizontal. Carefully up to the up to the edge of the petal. And lifting out any excess paint. If you've got a big dollop of paint there, just lift it out, get it nice. A nice even layer of paint. Okay, let's go over to this. So at this stage, that palette there is chockers full of the opposite color. So we daren't use any of anything over there unless we clean out an area. But I, I don't think we'll do that. I'm going to Carefully put all those brushes aside. Those two we can wash. And then we'll just put this whole palette one side and we use a new palette. Alrighty, so for that central bit, there's, there's tons of yellow, definitely tons of yellow. 
and then it's a bit of an orangey bits so we've can put down a little bit of our crimson and and that crimson is also going to help us get the the brown for the stamens eh so for the stamens we've got that brown so brown is basically orange's shadow color so all you got to do is just take orange and add the opposite color to it which is blue in other words you've got all three of primary colors with a bias towards the orange side. <laughs> yeah, I did when you, have, you hold your breath like that, when you're busy with such fine detail. So eventually, you, you're so out of breath, <laughs> you haven't done any physical work. <laughs> it's crazy. don't know why we do it. All right, so I'm just quickly washing those two brushes of mine alrighty let's take just another brush and I'm going to use that cadmium yellow and I'm going to block in this whole area neat because can you see it's pretty much yellow and then with little bits of orange around it so we may as well just block this whole area in with the yellow maybe i'll get just a bit of medium into that so it can flow better just enough for him to flow and go on easy yeah that's great now i'm not going to touch that purple Come right up next to it, but I'm not going to touch it. I don't want those two colors to mix, because remember they're opposites. Because if you now pick up some of that paint, it, it's going to end up here in the center. Then all this is going to end up some other yucky color. So Adam is asking, what do I do with these tutorial paintings after? The raw one I, I'm keeping up on YouTube for now. Um, but afterwards, I do go and sit down and I edit out all the little um, bits and make it flow nice and easy. And sometimes I actually add some extra bits to it as well. And then I uh, add it to the website. It becomes part of the, part of the collection of classes that I've got over there. All right, so I'm taking the yellow and I'm adding a little bit of crimson to it. Just to get an orangey kind of color. So what I'm looking for now is this little in-between color that's over there. So it seems to be roughly, roughly that. And let's get a bit of medium in there to make sure that he flows. That's great. Now I'm going to take that, I'm just going to create a bit of a, a no man's land. Can you see over here, there is a bit of an oranginess in this area over here. So now I'm going to just create a bit of a no man's land in between the purple and the yellow. So now I don't mind if it mixes a little bit or so on. I think we can probably, probably go a little bit dark and maybe even bring in a little bit of blue. Just to get it a bit more on the brown side. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, so if you wanna if you wanna see any of these classes 
can then obviously go and get the templates and so on. Then uh, just hop on over there to the website. Okay, now while we add it, let's go and take a look and see what the heck is going on in the central bit. Let's do a bit of planning there because it's quite complex, eh? Let's go to there and then zoom well in. All right. So we've got almost like little smaller petals, almost like petals that are busy growing here in the central bit over like this. And then these stamens come down over here like that. So they're curling along here. Here they're pointing towards us. There we're seeing them from the side and there we're seeing them from the front. So we've got all those different perspective lines that we need to take care of. I think let's put it down like that. Ah, what do I do with the, the, the physical painting? Um, most of them actually just keep them here by me for in case I need to take a photo. But if I have an exhibition, I will put them up for sale. I don't mind if they do sell because I could always create another one. I'll just make sure I've got a good photo of it before. <laughs> Alright, so let's take this and let's start just curling some of these guys in here just to get that that little central curling in effect over here. Just like this. So take it from here and curl them inwards all towards the center. Just like that. And I can you see because of those angles, it gives you that bit of a, a bowl effect. Okay, now let's darken up that that color. So I'm going to just add a bit more blue into this. Just to get it browner. Yeah, it seems all right. All right, I think I'm going to use a, a fine round for this central bit over here. And I'm going to look really carefully at these angles that these guys come in. And I'm going to pop them in. Now they're quite large. I'm still making them too small. They come out quite far. Like that over there, like that. And then just stop in that central bit over there. Yeah, some of those guys come way out to over there. So I must be more bold with these guys. So as before, I'm looking to create that that bowl effect. So I'm using these initial little little lines as a guide. These guys are curling up towards us. So what you've got is you've got perspective playing on them. So 
from that perspective is called foreshortening where they appear shorter because you're looking down the length of them make them a little bit longer And they automatically a little bit stripey, so I'm quite happy with that effect. I'm not going to blend them in too much, and I'm going to leave that stripey effect. Because if I look on the on the photo, can you see there is sort of shadings in that area over there? But I don't want to do any shadings over here. This is, we're keeping this one simple today. We're not going to go into all that crazy detail. So for shortening works like this. Let me just get something that's not too long. Maybe a, a tube of paint. So let's take this guy over here. When you're looking across something, you can see its full length. And that's those guys over there. Here, we're looking at them like that. So can you see they now appear a little bit shorter? And these guys over here, you're looking down on them. So now it appears even shorter. So you've got that over there versus those guys over there versus those guys over there so they're appearing gradually shorter and shorter because you're looking down the length of it so that's how foreshortening works and that's why you've got that and that's how you create that nice bowl effect of here by making those guys just shorter and shorter and shorter all right let's take a look the guys on this side are a little bit darker than the guys on that side so that's that's now confirmed that our sun is coming from the from the left to the right so i think i'll take just a little bit of this just give my brush a wipe just a little bit of this orangey color over here and just maybe just flick that outwards over here that'll give those guys a little bit of a lighter look like that and let's maybe take a little bit of a bit more blue and touch more red into that just a little bit darker not too much and I'm going to just flick these guys in with a with a darker area just from the center out and that's just going to help that th that rounding yeah that's enough don't want to put in too much effort with that All right, now we need to do these, the stamens. So for that, we need a nice dark, a nice dark color. So I'm going to take all this yellow. And maybe we should go to, maybe we should go to there. So I've got all that yellow that I've put down over there. Let's get some red into it to get a nice deep a deep orange get some blue in it so what we're looking for is a brown so your majority color is still orange yeah i'm quite happy with that see it's a really really dark brown Put a bit more yellow down there for when we do need it. All right, let's get some medium into that so it can flow. Mm, I wonder if that's enough, eh? Maybe we should mix some more. 
Otherwise we end up with just a tiny amount of paint. Yeah, that's cool. So what I'm looking for now is that dark um, stamen color. That's essentially what I've what I've mixed up over there. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, I suppose we can use this this round brush again. So it's just the the just the fine round. Just this this guy over here. And let's add the palette back on. There we go. What I'm looking for now is how high do these stamen go up along the up high how far up the petal do they go? Let's just adjust this view over there so we can see that whole guy. So you've got to judge that. So he seems to be going all the way almost up to around here. And then he comes to here and, and then he stops. So Lily's asking, do, does yellow, red, and blue give you a dark brown? Um, brown is orange's shadow color. So you start with an orange. So if you need a light brown, you first mix up a light orange. So that color I've got there is not flowing off the brush. It means my paint is too thick. So I need to add more medium to it. And if you need a dark brown, then you first start off with a dark orange. And then you add some blue to it, which is the opposite color. And there you go. There's your brown. I'm also just trying to see if I can use a, a different brush that's going to give us nice long flowing nice long flowing lines. Let's maybe try the, the soft forbit and see how he goes. He does seem to be a bit better, eh? Okay, so we've got tons of these little stamen. Each one is a different direction. Each one is a different size, and they do somehow seem to clump together quite a bit. Am I going to be able to paint these guys so that they look identical? Absolutely not. Not, not at all. So all I'm going to try and do is just create that mass that, they, that they've got. So I'm looking at the directions that they, that they come out in. And I'm going to copy that. And then from there, I'll just sort of add my own here at the bottom to create a bit of a mass. So each of these guys are different different lengths.
So these directions are really important. Take your time and get these directions right. Because as before, you've got foreshortening happening to them as well. So as I'm coming down here, I'm gradually shortening these guys out. Okay, so there I'm going to stop because we now need to figure out what's going on over there. What, what's in front of what? So here seems to be quite a bit of a Quite a clump in that area over there. There's quite a clump in this area over here. So I'm filling it up in this bottom area so that it looks fuller. As we come in here, we see sort of along the side of these guys. And now you can see why we fold that in over there because now you're going to have little areas. We have some of the The background shining through. Yeah, so those guys go over there. I think we're nearly there, eh? Here, where they meet, they sort of just... How would you put it? Fade in? Yeah, I think here we can add just a, one or two that are curling up in this direction. I don't see too many on the photo. And then once we've added that, then we'll we'll maybe add one or two of these stamen over that again. Then we've got, got some nice overlapping going on. Right, so now let's use a, a smaller brush and let's add a bit of Highlights. Can you see that they're not um, just dark because they're round? You've got different colors in them. Highlights and shadows. So we may as well just use this. Uh, yeah, we'll just use this orange over here. That'll work fine. Seems roughly. That's roughly that color. Maybe it's a little bit brown. All right, let's not be lazy. Let's do that and that. And a bit of white. So I'll just nick a bit of white off the other palette. Let's pop that in there and see where we get. So it's still a brown. It's just a brown with some white in it. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, so this paint now needs to lie on top of the previous one. So I've got to add more medium to it. So that is thinner than that paint over there. In order for him to be able to lie on top of the previous one. So he's quite thin there already. Let's see, maybe I'll use a, even a bit of a, a rigger brush. And now we just add some more of these. More of these guys in here. So I'm following roughly the guys with that be that were there before, but not not identical. These could be different ones, uh, and that way you've got some of them look highlighted, and some of them it look like new stamen. So there, let's maybe highlight that guy. Now some of these are just, they're their own little, little lines that I'm adding in. So you can sort of strategically use them to just create a mess. 
wherever you want or wherever you need some more detail like yeah i want this guy he's not standing out enough so i highlight him that way he stands out Alright, so here we do have a few little extra guys that are now starting to, how would you put it, grow and stand up. So let's take maybe some of the dark. And I will just add a few of these guys in here like that, just strategically, not too many, don't overdo them. So what I'm doing is I'm pretending they're coming up from here and then they're curling up. Coming up from here and then they're curling up. And that way it gets you that, that perspective correct. From here, they come from here, curls there and it curls up back on itself. Just a few of these guys. And as always, I'm using the the photo as a reference to guide me about roughly where to put these guys. Yeah, that should be enough over there. Okay, now a lot of these guys have that, like a purple tip. So I'm going to take the, the other palette. I think I'll just hold him like this. And let's start with the dark. Still with the rigger brush. Let's now give some of these guys that little purple tip. Not all of them, just some of them. So some areas have more, some areas have less. You can see I'm just painting an extra little bit onto the existing guys. You've now already got the effect, so this that you're adding now is just additions to what's already there. So what's nice about these tips that you're adding, you can use them strategically to tell you which direction these guys are going in. So I think all these guys here I will add a tip to. Like that.
awesome okay these guys over here let's take some of this orange and let's just highlight here and there specifically here on this last little edge over here where it curls over you want it to go lighter and just disappear into the mass so that it, it's going from that yellow mass that you've got over there to the orange and then to the brown that's what it must appear like but you're never actually painting the the yellow bit you're just painting the orange bit can you see there it just seems like it it just flows and melds into the into that mass over there now suddenly all this other mass that you've created is making sense all those few extra little lines that we added in there in the beginning that your eye is now telling you oh it's these guys that are or these guys that are coming out the same as these guys are all righty let's take a highlight color here maybe this let's see how he works we may be even end up using him let's see yeah no that one's fine you just want a nice little highlight inside that purple over there goes nice and quick eh Yeah, nearly done. Oh, yeah, we've got some lovely ones over there. They seem to be just purple, you know what? So I'm going to just take... Yeah, let's maybe start with... Not that full dark brown, maybe just this orangey brown. Just something like this. Just add one or two guys over there in this area. We'll add some purple for there like that. And then we'll highlight it. Just so that those guys are going all the way around, eh? So Patricia says, um, when she attempts detail like this, she tends to lose track of what you're actually looking at. And then it turns into a mess. So what happens there, Patricia, is that you're not standing back enough. You, you're probably sitting down and you're like really close to the um, to the canvas and now you've got yourself stuck and looking at those little details so the first thing you want to do is stand up and paint with your hold, hold your brush here right at the end like this and you, and you paint using the end so now you, you're standing back from your reference and from your painting and then you'll find it becomes a lot easier then you're not stuck in that mass anymore alrighty let's take I think I'll just I'm just gonna go with a small brush for now we'll finagle all this detail in there maybe I can get us zoomed in a bit closer on that on their details just give me a sec to bring that up on the
There we go. Just like that. All right, so here we have one petal casting a shadow on another. So I'm going to take just this darkest purple we've got. And let's add that shadow in over there. I think this brush is a bit small. Let's go for a full bit. Let's whack that because that's casting a nice shadow. And that strong shadow over here is going to lift up this petal. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Here in that corner there, there's the next guy. He's also casting a nice sh strong shadow. And so is this guy over here. He's casting a nice strong shadow too. So we'll put that in like that. Yeah, I am seeing a little bit of reflected light and stuff, but I think for today we'll just, we'll, we'll turf that. We're not going to worry too much about that. We're going to add a few of these other little uh, stamen and things over there. That'll be fine. All right, that. Let's go to the mid-tone. And let's just blend this guy out here to the sides. So all this is in front, and it's out of focus. So I'm doing stuff really, really quick and really rough. I'm not going to put in much effort on this because this is not where you look when somebody looks at the painting. They don't look at this. They're looking here. So all this that we're doing here now is just almost, you can say, filling up the canvas. So Chase is saying... Um, it tends to be trying to be too perfect and standing back will help you stop trying to be too perfect so try that and see how that works for you all right i'll just block this in here so here i'm going to get a little bit of a, a sharp edge just to show you that it is a it is a petal so it's really, you can see I'm doing super quick little shadings. I'm not putting in any effort whatsoever. Because I know it's just extras. Okay, let's start with, say, the, the mid-tone. We'll block in this guy over here. In actual fact, here I'm not even worrying about getting a sharp edge. It, you can go over the edge to make it a little bit rough. Because this part here is even it's out of focus. Let's go to the highlight. Yeah, that's good enough for that. Okay, now it's back to our stamen colors. We'll get a few little stamen that are over those guys. So if I look in the photo, most of these stamen are, are purple ones. But what the heck, we'll add a, we'll add a few little brown ones in as well. So I'm just pulling them out like this. Some coming forward like this. And some going backwards. Or pointing upwards. So you've got, got a combination of guys that are sort of coming towards you. And other guys that are curling up. All right, for the final flourish, let's add a few little purple tips on these guys. So it's back to the rigger brush again. Not all of them, just some of them.
All right, let's stand back and see what does our painting look like. There we go. That's about as straight as well as it gets. Yes, I quite enjoyed that that painting. It was it was fun to do. I think if I had to be picky, I would add just a few more little guys standing up from this vicinity. There's no, I didn't add any little ones standing up over here. Yeah, I think that's enough. Otherwise, you just start fiddling with stuff that doesn't add any extra value. I always like to. Uh, sort of ask myself is uh, is what I'm doing now you know near the end of the painting is what I'm doing now going to make this painting significantly better if it's just going to add little embellishments yeah is it really necessary so you got to ask yourself do I need to carry on isn't going to make a big difference yes or no so there you have it now you know how to how to paint the water lily so if you enjoyed today's class, you can uh, check out the edited replay on the website and you can also get the template and the, the handouts and stuff for this class on the website. The, the link is there on the screen. And when you do become a, uh, a, a patron, then you also get access to hundreds of my other classes on the website. All real-time paint-along classes. There's oil painting, there's acrylic painting, there's pencil drawing, there's watercolor, there's pen and ink. You name it. Classes and courses. While we add it, please don't forget to do this. Because that way I can uh, inform you when I go live again. Then you can paint and draw with. So in the next live class we are drawing a cat. I'm quite looking forward to that one. That's going to gonna be great. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I'll see you next time. Alrighty guys, in the live class, if you still got questions, fire away. I'll hang around and answer them for you. So Patricia's saying when she's got a big project, she tends to get overwhelmed. Then break it down into little bite-sized chunks, Patricia. Don't look at the whole painting or, and, and think, oh, I can't do this, or, oh, heck, what do I do next? Break it down. Start at the back, work your way forward. So when you start at the back, just do the furthest thing. Maybe it's just the sky. Forget about the clouds on top of the sky. Just do the sky. Once that's done, then you forget about everything else. You just look at the sky. And you, now I'm just painting clouds. And you paint the clouds. So you do it little bite-sized chunks. And before you know it, you've got your painting all done. So don't let a big project overwhelm you. The minute you break it down, it just becomes... You can remember you can only you got only one hand that you're painting with at a time, so you can only do one thing. So if you're just concentrating on that one thing that your hand is busy doing, forget about the rest. It's unimportant at that point. Thanks, guys. I'm glad you enjoyed the lesson. I enjoyed it. It was it was a fun painting. And I think if you put it in a nice, bold frame, it's going to look really good. You've got those browns in there. So if you can put a nice, broad brown f uh, frame around it, 
Or even a nice big black frame would look good. I'm glad you learnt a lot, Ishri. Same time, same place, next week. We'll do it all again. <laughs> Alrighty guys, take care, have a great weekend. I'll see you next week.